Well, Ben's got obviously a lot of, a lot of talent. He catches your eye. Uh, I think the pace would would be something that we we haven't got in abundance in the squad. So it's something a little bit different. Uh, He's a young man, he's got a lot to learn in the game. Uh, I've never had the chance to work closely with Ben, so it just seemed like the right opportunity to put him in. The squad going for 23 to 26. Just just made it something that I, I thought I should do, so we'll have a look at Ben and see how he does. Steve, the, uh, the other player in the squad, with no caps, Ross McCrory, what were your thoughts on bringing him in? Well, obviously I lost my two first choice, right backs, stroke right wing backs, uh, and Aaron and Nathan, so looking down, uh, Ross obviously had a really difficult time when he first went to Bristol City with, a, with, with quite a serious uh, problem, got back in the team second half of the season, uh, acquitted himself well, got some minutes under his belt, and another one who has been in squads before but hasn't had a cap, so a, a chance to look at, at Ross as well and see how he's see how he's doing. A few older players in the squad as well. James Forrest had a great end of the season with Celtic. Ryan Jack in as well, having missed the previous years. What were your thoughts on their inclusion? Experience. Uh, I think take uh, I'll take Ryan Jack first. Obviously, Ryan's been quite an important part of the squad and the, the team and, and he's in my time as head coach. Uh, like you said, he missed the last Euros, unfortunately, with an injury. He hasn't had the best finish to the season with Rangers, but I know he's been fit for the last two or three weeks and it just hasn't been selected at the club, which is which is unfortunate for Ryan, but I think he deserves to be there. He's, he's a midfield player who's a little bit different to the, the other type of midfield player that I've got, so that was the thinking behind Ryan. Uh, James Forrest, where do you start? You know, it's, if ever there's an example to young players on how to conduct yourself if things are not going well for you at your club, then I think I think James epitomises that. Train well, work well, keep your head down, keep believing, and you never know. Maybe the head coach will pick you for your country again. And, and that's what he's done. Uh, he's had a f fantastic finish to the season. Obviously brings a bit of experience was part of the squad in the last Euros, so no, it's, it'll be nice to see James again. Look, he has been quite far away from your thoughts a few months ago, just when he wasn't really getting on the bench for Celtic at all. I think you're always, you're always aware of players, but obviously if you're not playing regular at your club, uh, and James had been, it was over a period of time, it wasn't just a, a short-term thing. Like I said before, he obviously he's worked really hard. He, he's just kept his head down. He's worked. He's caught the manager's eye, and he's he's managed to come in and be, again, another one who probably grabs your attention with the way he's finished the season. You're looking, you're thinking, wow, J James is back to maybe where he was three or four years ago, which, which is a credit to him and and something that I didn't think I could. I could overlook, and that's why he's in the that's why he's in the twenty eight. How tough? I'm sorry, how tough was the decision making process overall? And, and did it go down to the wire over the last few days? Have you been sort of chopping and changing? Didn't really go down to the wire. Uh, obviously, with the injuries, you, there's probably four. Four we've mentioned: Aaron and Nathan. Uh, Jacob Brown obviously picked up an injury, couldn't make it. There's Fergie. Everybody talks about Lewis would would have been part of the squad. So then suddenly you. You're losing four players from maybe your, the front of your, your mind and you, you're starting to go into the back of your mind and think, OK, how can we replace them? Going for 23 to 26 probably made it more difficult, to be honest, because then you're, you're thinking how to balance the squad, how to get the right the right personnel, the right people. Uh, and, and the squad is not always just about who plays. It's, it's also about who doesn't play and the ones that that don't play or don't get many minutes are just as big a part of the squad moving forward as as the ones that do play because they they control the harmony of the group, if you like. They, they, they're the ones that can be four or five weeks, six weeks, hopefully, without minutes on the pitch. And you, you tell a professional player that you're going to be involved for that length of time and not get too many minutes on the pitch, it, it can be a... It can be a big ask for some people. So to get the balance right is was, was quite tricky. You mentioned you've given yourself that, that pleasing role, Steve. But how tough a decision do you have on your hands now, 
I think more than a third of the squad have still got games to play this week. I will be in, will be involved in games before we meet up. Like I said, there's there's probably three or four players, five or six players that we've maybe got a little bit of doubt about. So let, let's see how the how the pre camp pans out, and then we'll take it from there. But ultimately, there's going to be two very difficult conversations. The good thing about it is. It won't be a telephone call, it'll be a sit-down, face-to-face, and I'll just have to tell it like it is. But it will be a difficult, it will be two difficult conversations. Just looking on the positive aspect, as you see Rules 28 being written down, how excited are you for what's going to unfold in the next weeks? Yeah, you know me, I get overexcited, don't I? <laughs> it's, uh, <clears throat> it's great. I'm really pleased that I can sit here this morning, and or this afternoon, and, and put out those names because it, it makes the tournament feel a little bit more real since March. I've got to be honest, it's been a bit of a drag. A lot of a lot of bad news and uh, not so much good news. Obviously the March camp, two defeats, that's still in the back of my mind. And you are thinking I just want to get just want to get the boys together again and start working towards the friendly matches and then obviously into the tournament which I'm sure will take care of itself. Steve, how do you compare this group to the one you worked with at Euro 2020? Uh, much more experienced. Uh, the group they took to 20, 2020 or delayed Euro 2020 was maybe a little bit inexperienced. Certainly inexperienced in, in tournament terms t- because we don't qualify very often. So more caps, uh, a better understanding, I think, of what to expect from the tournament. So, yeah, I think more experienced and, and hopefully... Good enough to create a little bit of history for Scottish football. And now you know the names, now you know who you've got available to you. Do you feel this group can get through the group stage? I think they're capable. I think it's a good group of players. Uh, obviously, our aim is to be as competitive as we can be in all the matches. I believe that if we play to our, the best of our abilities, then we could be, and I mentioned could be, the first, te- first Scottish team come out of the group stages and that would be a magnificent achievement, but that will be the aim. Steve, just almost nearly three and a half weeks until that first game, Germany on the, on the Friday night. What's your message to the Tartan Army, to the Scotland fans that might be going on, the Scotland fans that, that are at home getting excited for this now? No, nah, just go and just enjoy it, enjoy the occasion and enjoy hopefully a really good performance for the Scottish team. Uh, get behind the boys, I'm sure they will. I don't need to tell them that because you know they're going to be on your side anyway. So, no, it's, it's, some, it's something to look forward to. Everyone can look forward to it and hopefully come the end of the summer we're all still smiling. Steve, there was a little bit of speculation about Timo Lovinenko. Was there ever anything in that? In terms of? In terms of maybe getting a shot forward? Well, I think Dino's. England international under 21. Uh, he qualifies for England, Scotland, Portugal. So I'm not sure really what. At the moment, he, he's chosen for England. So that's the way it is. Okay. Cheers, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.